And we are back with Isaac Sturgill with Legal Aid of North Carolina. We're answering your questions about evictions or any questions you may have about legal aid. And you can see the number at the bottom of your screen is how you can text those questions to us. It is 336-379-5775. So Isaac, our first question is when does the evictions moratorium end in North Carolina? And do you know if there is a chance that it could be extended? Sure, that's, that's a great question. And so there's been kind of a patchwork of different laws and different moratoriums that have uh, been in effect over the last uh, several months. But the, the one that's in effect now is called the CDC or the Centers for Disease Control Moratorium. That went into effect on September 4th. It was supposed to end on December 31st, but uh, Congress in their last coronavirus relief bill extended it in, until the end of this month, January 31st. And what that law says is that for tenants to meet certain qualifications, if they sign a an affidavit, uh, they call it a declaration saying that they can't pay their rent and that they'll be homeless if they're evicted and other things. And they give that declaration to their landlord. It says the landlord is not allowed to evict them for non-payment of rent. And so that's the, that's the only significant uh, moratorium that's in effect right now. It will expire at the end of this month. Currently, there's nothing else said after that. However, uh, the new administration that's about to go into the White House on Wednesday has proposed an, an additional moratorium. Um, nothing's set in stone right now, but there, there are uh, a lot of people that believe that there will be an extension on that for, uh, for several more months. We'll keep our eyes on that. Isaac, someone writes in, is there any reason a landlord can still evict you during the moratorium? So the moratorium protects tenants from eviction for non-payment of, of rent, but there are certain other things that a landlord could evict the tenant for even during the moratorium. And so the moratorium does not cover things like evictions for criminal activity, evictions for destruction of property, evictions for lease violations besides non-payment of rent. And so again, it's really engineered towards uh, stopping evictions for people who just can't afford to pay the rent because of uh, income lost due to, to COVID. Someone else writes in, who can help me if I'm being threatened with eviction from my home right now? Sure, so I mean, there, there's a couple of pieces to that. If the evictions for non-payment of, of rent or for any reason at all, people are always welcome to call Legal Aid of North Carolina. Um, our, our number is 1-866-219-5262. It's free to call. We do represent tenants in eviction court and uh, if we're able to open a case uh, for a tenant that calls, we may be able to give them representation. Um, if someone's looking for financial assistance, the, the best number to call is, is uh, uh, 211, or you can look up um, NC211 on the internet. So someone says that their landlord took out some papers on them. They're going to court on February 17th, wanting to know what they can do. Is that the best thing to do is to call that same number? Or is there another way to go about this? Yeah, well, so they've got some time. I mean, if, they, if they've got court that far out, then, then definitely I, I would uh, encourage them to call legal aid. And it's again, it's free to call. We'll, we'll screen them. And if we're able to help them, then we will do that. Um, but they, they may also want to keep an eye out on, on 211 on their webpage just to see what uh, financial resources are, are available. Um, in addition to all the different various uh, moratoriums that have been passed over the, the past several months, there's there's rental money that's coming down. And so, you know, people have heard of the HOPE program that provided rental assistance. That that application process is currently closed. But um, in this last coronavirus relief bill that Congress passed, there was about $700 million in rental assistance that was allocated to North Carolina. And so we're, we expect that pretty soon um, that money will come online and it'll start being distributed and that there'll, there'll be some application processes that open back up. And so I would encourage people to to keep, you know, they're welcome to call legal aid to see if we can help them with legal representation, but also keep an eye on on two one one's website because I expect that any you know any day now that, that there's going to be some more rental assistance coming online. Someone writes in: Is it legal for your landlord to file eviction due to COVID nineteen and then rent your home to someone else before you go to court? Well, it's not the only legal way that a landlord can evict somebody is through the court process and so i, I want to make that very clear um and so if you know if the landlord has done something to force somebody out of their home outside of the court process that would be illegal so i, I guess that question makes me think well how you know how did they rent it to someone else if you're still there and that makes me think maybe they got kicked out before they went to court right so pe people need to know that if, if your landlord is uh telling you you have to leave, um, you know, or they're sending you notices. Just remember the only legal way 
a landlord can evict you is by filing court papers and you have to have a, a, a you know a magistrate or a judge enter an eviction order against you if your landlord does anything else to evict you like turning off your water or turning off your power or anything like that, that that's an illegal eviction and if that happens to you um, you, ha you would have some recourse against that landlord Interesting. So we know a lot of people apply for the, the HOPE program. Many people are still waiting on the money from that. As someone writes in, can a landlord not renew your lease because you are still waiting on that money from the HOPE program? So the, first of all, the HOPE program, you know, it, it, it was a, the money came down and there's a lot of different organizations across the state that are, that are having to try to distribute that money very, very quickly. And there have been some delays, unfortunately, and sometimes it, take, it can take several weeks or even more than a month to get the money uh, distributed. Um, if the landlord, you know, landlords are not allowed to evict somebody because they, they can't pay their rent. And so when you say like, is the landlord deciding to evict somebody because they haven't got the money yet? If that person is covered under the CDC declaration, if, if they've uh, a, a moratorium, if they've read the CDC declaration and signed it and give it to your, their landlord, then the landlord should not be evicting them right now for, for non payment of rent. I see. Yeah, and that evictions moratorium lasts through the end of this month. Um, Isaac, someone writes in, I'm a homeowner, not a renter. Is there any eviction protection from credit unions? The homeowner, so as far as mortgage relief and that, that type of thing goes, unfortunately, the CDC moratorium only applies to renters. So it does not, it does not uh, apply to uh, homeowners. So as far as creditors coming after you or the bank coming after you to foreclose on a property, the CDC moratorium would not help you in that situation. And we realize, you know, at Legal Aid, we realize that's a, a very big issue. We know that it's not only renters that are suffering right now, it's also homeowners who can't pay their, their mortgage because of income loss. And so there, there's currently, you know, no, uh, uh, you know, quote unquote eviction protection for homeowners out there right now. But again, we're very hopeful that that's something that the, you know, the new uh, administration in the White House will include in uh, whatever, you know, uh, package that they pass. Uh, come later this month. Yeah, it, well, someone actually just wrote in to us while we are answering that question. Is there any help financially for people who are having trouble paying their mortgage? I'm, I'm not aware of any right now. I, I would encourage homeowners to also call 211 mm -hmm. um, just, just to check. And again, um, and just because I'm not aware of something right now doesn't mean it, it doesn't exist. But if there's not anything out there right now, again, again I would hope that that's something that the the new uh, uh, federal administration will include in the, in the next uh, relief package. Yeah. Uh, someone else is writing in that he's having problems with his landlord getting him to fix things. So what does this tenant need to do in order to get their landlord to fix these items? Does it need to be in writing? Is there a reasonable time that this person would need to wait for that? Yeah, so as far as a landlord's duty to make repairs, North Carolina law says that a, a landlord has a duty to keep the property up to uh, any local uh, housing code to keep it in a fit and habitable condition and to you know make repairs when they are when they are requested. Um, most repairs under North Carolina law do not have to be requested in, in writing. There are some uh, one kind of interesting caveat to that is that if you're asking for the repair of an appliance like a dishwasher or a washing machine or something like that, that would need to be in writing. But in general, they don't have to be uh, in writing and there's no there's no you know the law says that the landlord has to fix it within a reasonable amount of time and there's no exact amount of days on that but what's considered reasonable depends on what the repair is right so if you have a if you have a, a leaky spot on the ceiling maybe a couple weeks is reasonable if you have no heat during the winter time uh, maybe a couple days is reasonable right it's, it's not it's not reasonable to be without heat for two weeks so there, there's no exact uh, number of days um, but that is uh, the landlord's responsibility is to make those repairs within a, a reasonable amount of time. Um, if a landlord re fails to do that, there's a, a couple of options the tenant may have. A tenant could file a lawsuit against the landlord uh, based on the landlord's failure to make repairs. Um, a tenant may also call, if there's a local county or city housing code inspector, they may call uh, the, the local housing code inspector to come do a report. And they, they may force the landlord to make repairs. And if the landlord refuses, they could uh, they could, you know, uh, impose penalties or fines on them. And finally, on that point, I'll say, even though the law does not require requests for repairs to be made in writing, it's always a good idea for a tenant to make those requests in writing, because if you do end up having to talk to a housing code inspector, or if you do end up in a courtroom trying to plead your case to a judge, um, you're going to need proof that you that you made those requests. 
Isaac Sturgill with Legal Aid of North Carolina. Thank you so much for volunteering your time to answer some of these questions. If you missed any of that, we are going to post the Q&A on WFNYNews2.com. Just look in the Two Wants to Know section. We are uploading this entire interview to YouTube as well.